Bob Pollock from the Extension Service in the studio with us this morning. You can give him a call at 349-WCCS or at 479-1160 if you have a question for Bob this morning. 349-WCCS is 9227. Okay. All right. Morning, Bob. Hey, good morning. Good to have you with us here today. Good to be here. I don't know what's on your agenda, but I want to know <laughs> about this uh, this uh, hemlock invasive bug that is out there. Is that the first thing you have in your hand right it there? It is. Um, Amazingly. That's just what we need is someone else to eat our plants and trees. Uh, so there's a new one out there, huh? Well, this one's been around for a while. Uh-huh. But it hasn't it hasn't been as invasive, maybe is the way to put that. Okay. Uh, or consistently invasive as, say, the emerald ash borer. Yeah. Uh, Cause we were talking but it's all, been around. We were talking about ash borer a couple of years ago. Yep. It ate up all the ash trees, and then evidently it's moved on it's because just, there's nothing yep. left. Yep, just like a tidal wave. It went, went across the state and, and we're talking did about horrendous the, damage. And The spotted lanternfly, we've talked a lot about that, and we're still following it. But right. now there's this thing. What is this? Right. So hemlock woolly adelgid. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the word, it looks foreign. Um, or, it, you know, it's not like Smith or Jones. or It's different. Or Pollock or something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but adelgid, A-D-E-L-G-I-D. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So you can only imagine the movie, you know, someone reading that this piercing, sucking pest, which is what it is. Okay. Um, but its mouth parts pierce into the bark. Uh-huh. All right. The wood of the plant, especially along the newest branches, uh, last year's growth into the two years old growth. Okay. And so they pierce into that and then they remove the sap or suck Mm -hmm. the sap out. So piercing, sucking insect. Okay. So that's what it does. A lot of people would say, well, how would that kill a big old tree? Those trees are big and mighty. Well, in in big enough numbers, like a big crowd, Uh uh, then they can overwhelm and remove enough sap from the plant that it stresses it. And then we can get into other things. But over the period of two or three or four years, it can kill the the tree. Yeah. And this has happened to, especially in forest locations. And and we've had a number of forest locations across the state where there's just, you know, native stands of hemlocks, especially along Mm -hmm. streams and um, where nobody, you know, not too many people travel unless you're a hiker or something or back in the woods and know where those trees are. So they've Um, just been massacred? Yes. In spots. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so then it's moved around and of course, it can get into the trade, and and then it can get into your yard. And it's probably the most common question I've had over the last several weeks because uh-huh. all of a sudden, uh, for some reason, and, and maybe people have heard a couple reports or something, and then they go out and look at their hemlocks yeah. and see that, oh, no, I have this same thing. Yeah. And, is and it's any, very noticeable. Is there anything they can do? Yes, there are things we can do. Okay. So first we want to make sure we have hemlocks. Uh Um, some people, you know, you just call them evergreens. They're green, they're green all year round. So they're an evergreen or they're a pine or, Uh um, what actually they could be a pine. They could be a spruce. Uh, they could be a hemlock. Mm -hmm. Um, hemlocks have nice, usually shiny, dark green needles that are very tiny. They might be a quarter of an inch long. Um, and then all along the branches, they are very resilient. They have been a very popular uh, shrub and tree over decades and decades because you can shear them. A lot of people use them as hedges between properties or to hide things, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to block views, and you can trim them um, and you can keep them that way. And so they've become very popular because of that. So they're all around. Okay. And so your neighbor can get infested and you can be okay, and then the next thing you know, you have it. And then you can start to look for it. Pretty easy to look for. Look at the ends of the branches uh, out towards the tips. And these particular insects will primarily get on the underside of the branch, although when you get higher, thicker populations of them, they can appear to be on the tops of the branches as well because they t- kind of tend to climb or uh, jumble up all over each other. And there are white, so they stand out against that nice green background. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. but they're white, cottony masses, little tiny, little balls of cotton. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can turn the branch over, look at it, and it'll be pretty visible if they're there or not. Uh, okay. Because so- normally, if it's not there, you're just going to see, and hemlocks on the underside are lighter in color. So the dark side is dark green. When you flip them over, they're a lighter green. Okay. Uh, to begin with, and then, but these are just white, and they'll line the branches, and they'll be pretty visible. Okay. And it's a waxy; it's a cotton, looks just like cotton, mm-hmm. but it's there's wax in it. Yeah, I'm looking at a picture of it. Yeah, and so they're, and they just they're like all these little tiny balls lined up in rows all along the branch, and there's an adult under there. Which is darker in color, so if you can t- take Pull some tweezers or something, yeah, they're pretty small, so mm-hmm. you have to have some delicate tools to be able to kind of tease that apart and get down to where the real insect is. And then uh, they'll also lay eggs under there as well. And then there's a crawler stage, so the eggs will hatch. Mm-hmm. And then they'll have these crawlers, so they can't fly; they don't have wings, so they call them crawlers. And they that's how that can spread. And of course. Wind and rain, um, you know, brushing against it, sure. you know, can pick them up and, and move them around. Mm-hmm. And then Typical all, methods that, yes. uh, that they get around. And infest. Yeah. So what do we hemlocks. do when we have them? So first, identify that you have them. Okay. Um, and then if you do, then there are several different treatments. One of the most common treatments, uh, there's a couple different systemic insecticides that can be applied, either foliarly, okay, spray it on the whole tree. Uh-huh. A lot of people have very large hemlocks, which make it nearly impossible to yeah, you got a 30, do that practically. 30-foot tree. You're not yeah, or to... maybe a 50- or 60-foot tree yeah. easily mm-hmm. um, if they haven't been sheared and, and maintained. So you kind of have to look at what's the size of the tree, and then it, a lot of times it becomes cost-preventative to do really big trees. But um, So... Foliar application or a systemic application. There's a couple different products um, that can be purchased over the counter um, if you feel comfortable doing that. And Mm -hmm. you can do a drench around the base of the tree is one of the application methods, probably the most common. Oh, yeah. You're digging a trench around? No, you don't trench it. You do a drench. drench Yeah, D-R-E-N-C-H. Okay. You drench it. Drench, yeah. Okay, so, so the, you mix it with water and then yep, you drench yep. it. product comes as concentrate, uh-huh. and then you mix that up with water. And then based on the diameter of the tree trunk, mm-hmm. that's how you determine the quantity that you need. Okay. Uh, and then that will be absorbed into the roots um, around the base of the tree mm-hmm. and then moved up through the tree so that when those insects start sucking on the branches and removing that sap, they get a dose of the poison. And then that takes care of them. Yeah. Um, Seems one like treatment that would take a while. Yeah, it usually takes uh, one or two treatments of that. Spring and fall are typically the time frames that mm-hmm. they will they will do that. So you can do that yourself, or you can hire somebody, uh, pest control company uh, that does tree and shrub treatments to to also you know do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then you know if you have smaller ones. Uh, dormant oil, horticultural oil uh, is another option that you can spray foliarly on the tree to, to treat them as well. Uh, and there's a couple different materials that you can use when the crawler stage is out to kill the crawlers before they settle down, build wax over their bodies. Um, that waxy layer becomes a little bit impenetrable, so it's difficult to control them once they settle down and put that wax over them because it's just... It, you know how wax repels things, yeah. water, uh, yeah. so it doesn't get absorbed. That's where the oils come in because they can penetrate into that um, and, and control the, the insect. All right. So, But the- it's something to keep track of. It's something to look for. Uh-huh. Uh, I was just on a property the other day, and boom, there it was. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, so, so it's called, what, the woolly mammoth? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, the, the- Hemlock woolly adelgid. Hemlock woolly adelgid. Yeah. H-W-A, if you want to okay. shorten Hawa. that down. The Hawa. The Hawa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, But nonetheless, so it's yet a, another invasive yeah. creature eating up our landscape. So in most cases, you know, if you let it go, you're going to see a decline. 
um, in your plant, possibly uh -huh. death over time. Does the, this the, only go after the hemlock? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's its primary pest. Um, and then there's two other pests that we have commonly seen on hemlock. They can get sp uh, spruce spider mite. Mm -hmm. um, so spruce spider mite was first identified on spruce, hence getting the name spruce spider mite, but mm -hmm. it also will get on hemlock. And then there's, and spruce spider mite is a warm season mite, which attacks plants when the temperatures are warmer, typically during the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, also a sucking insect removes plant sap, will cause the, the plant color to fade into yellow and then turn the needles brown. Um, the other insect on hemlock is um, an area fired mite, <laughs> which is a cool season mite. Okay. Um, and that can attack as early as March. You know, oh, we're, yeah. we're still in winter, and that can start to feed uh, on the hemlock needles. Same thing, it's also a sucking insect, uh, but they primarily are going to be a problem in the late winter, spring. They'll kind of hang out during the summer months when it's really hot, and then they'll pick up activity again as we move into when things start to cool off a little bit in late summer and into fall. You bring that kind of info so, in here. You can just stay back out of the yeah. studio. <laughs> yeah, so you, you kind of have to, you have to look at the plant. Um, you can misidentify what the problem is. You may see yellowing. You may see browning. You may see needle drop. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we need to look closer at which pest is causing that. Um, of course, we can also have environmental conditions that will do the same thing. Sure. You know, too dry, too wet. Uh, same same uh, symptoms can occur. Yeah. Wow. But, all right, so thanks for all the good news. Yeah. That's all that we have time for today before you destroy us in other ways. Thank you, Bob. It's in other ways. Thank you, Bob. It's